The events in this video are fictional as the characters portrayed within. In this scenario, to anyone living or dead are merely coincidental and have been created at random by Xcom's name generator. Seriously. Okay, civilians, get behind. We still have a couple of turns to spare, at least. Okay, Houston and McLean, you two are up front tanking. Running. Lustrous, you're not exactly a damage dealer, you fall back a little bit. And McLean, on your way past, maybe you can just sh shoot this chrysalid in the face. If you would. Wow, one shot, one kill. Oh, right. Uh, I should have pulled you back first, shouldn't I, Ether? That's fine. Ooh, friendly. You do not have line of sight. That's really worrying. Myers, will you have line of sight? Moving. You do. Can you hit him? Maybe. If I flashbang you, will you be in range to hit me? Who else might be able to have a shot? Got it. Snyder for one. 90 to hit. Minimal damage. That is horrible. And Aristotle. You've got a shot, but not a very good one. All oh, right, Bay. Yeah, you should probably keep moving. Moving on target location. Can you get an AP grenade? You can. Okay, now at this rate, fine. Myers, take your shot. 62. If not, we will AP, which should probably kill. No need. Okay, everybody else, Overwatch. Not gonna lie, I have no idea how many chrysalids or zombies are active. Three civilian zombies are no doubt active. And what, I've killed two of the chrysalids? I think? Maybe maybe three? But nonetheless, it's those zombies that I'm worried about when they turn into chrysalids. They'll be able to attack on their reveal turn. Here we go. Good crit. But didn't do any damage. Interesting. Adjusting aim. That's okay, Lustrious. I don't blame you. And they are catching up. They are really catching up. Not great. Okay, let's move up and take him out. Wow. I, I guess he had taken damage, it just didn't show it. Oh, minimal damage, Houston. Yeah, Mize, you can be up front as well. You've got quite a bit of health. He's down. Weapons empty. Can't engage. Now, there is another zombie out there. And he could be just about ready to turn into a chrysalid. Snyder, you should have double tap. Burning through ammo fast. That is pretty rubbish damage. You might as well go ahead. See you in hell. No rounds. Okay, everybody else keep moving up. We are all getting out of here, except for those civilians that turn into zombies. They're, they're not going anywhere. Get those freaks. We, we will get those freaks friendly. We will get those freaks. Moving out. That girl. I'm on the move. Okay, civvies, run round. Keep out the danger zone.
And Ether, cover the rear. Just in case there's one right here and he decides to drop down. I think that zombie just turned in. Yep, turned into a chrysalid. Strike one. That airstrike is closing in your position. You need to get to the evac point before it's too late. Oh yeah, I definitely know. Um, you haven't got any ammo, but I kind of still need you to tank. And that Chrysler could just jump straight over the roof. No, Thanks move up. That That's fine, just move up. You can reload there. Should move up as well. I don't think that Chrysler's going to be in range. Hopefully there aren't any more out there. Oh man, you're all out of ammo. Hey! Sivs, can you run past? Yes, you can. Go. Now, go, go, go. No more civilians are dying today. Illustrious, yeah, you don't have much health either. But I do kind of need you to reload. Okay, move up and reload. We are nearly out of here. Position confirmed. You've got way too low health to be up front. There, on the other hand, you could survive here. And drone, let's be honest, no one cares about you. Snyder, come on, let's go. Moving the designated We're nearly position. out of here, come on. Okay, if you've got more than one shot left, Overwatch, if you don't, let's reload. Back in. It's killing time. Do I need to There's something out there. Okay. We've got more coming in. Nice shot friendly. Wouldn't expect anything less. Okay, that is it people. We are out of here. Yes, sir. We are not going to stick around for kills. We have killed more than enough chrysalids and zombies for one day. Roger that. That girl. Caught in the Van Dorn. Roger. Tracking. Alright, that is it. We are out. And there's only one last thing left to do. Already there. Say we take off, nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Our soldiers traded their lives to protect countless civilians. If we hadn't taken out that hive, there's no telling how bad this situation would have gotten. We did, in fact, protect countless civilians. It was more like about six that we saved, but still, it was better than nothing, and I won't hear anything else about it. <laughs> Ignore the fact that we actually lost ten. Um, yeah, that's from the units I was spawning in and moving around and juggling and implanting with chrysalids. Don't worry about that, we didn't lose anybody. And on top of that, Illustrious is coming home with us. In a day or so, he needs to say goodbye to his family. Not that there's going to be anybody left in Newfoundland to say goodbye to. But still, I need to have words with Bradford about that team he sent before this one. So, if you'll excuse me. Right, all those exhaustions. Before I have harsh words with Bradford, yeah, we've got quite a bit of exhaustions here. Well, Friendly is finally... Finally gonna be our first overwatching soldier. He's got opportunist and he's got rapid reactions And those two are good enough for me Well, I mean those two are actually really good in general, but up against psychokinetic strike It's always a good perk grenadier not that great on infantry considering they usually take scopes But rapid reactions when there's also opportunist on a soldier that has such high accuracy Absolutely friendly nice work. You did your squad proud and you brought them all home safely 
Aristotle leveled up as well. Right, now I was thinking of turning Aristotle into an officer because he has a plus one officer will perk, which is granted a bit rubbish. He also gets the double damage reduction from cover, although it's up against Sci Inspiration, which is always, always good. And also Weapons Expert, which can be handy, I suppose, depending on what's further down the list. And, oh, and then there's Band of Warriors, which he can't actually make use of because this perk is outright broken unless you get it from actually being an officer and not just having it and then becoming an officer. So it's really only this perk, the plus one will, which he's already got. Let's not kid ourselves. He had that already, so I have to give it to him, whether I've changed my mind or not. The game kicks this perk off his perk tree because he's not an officer when he comes back from a mission, but he did have this perk. I probably wouldn't have given it to him. I probably probably would have changed my mind and gone with squad sight and then at weapons expert I probably would have allowed him to use like marksman rifles maybe possibly but yeah he has that which means he's probably going to become an officer 56 will is really really good actually for a corporal so yeah Aristotle you're going to be an officer so have your double damage reduction from cover and when I turn you into an officer that'll be all the more officer perks to be handed out to everybody else Oh right, and the game's saying that you've already got Sergeant because you had a Pet Master perk as your random rookie perk, I believe. So when you get to Sergeant, I need to make sure that I give you either Damage Control or Tandem Warheads. Probably Tandem Warheads because you're an Engineer, which would be really effective. Because your grenades were very powerful on that mission. Well done, Aristotle. You really put Michael Bay to shame. The only thing he wasn't good at. But yeah, I'll have to make sure when he gets to Sergeant, I check this perk because the game won't tell me that he's leveled up because he's already been given the Pet Master perk as his random rookie perk. Lastly, we have Hewson. Thankfully, we did not have to use him as a tank. And frankly, it will probably be the last time that he gets used as a tank. Mind control isn't bad, but 46 will at Sergeant isn't really much to write home about. Automated threat assessment isn't the worst thing in the world. It gives him 0.5 damage reduction, which as I said, he doesn't technically have any other tanking perks. Shock absorbent armor and the other tanking perk that reduces melee attack damage, which I can't remember what it's called. I don't consider Consider them to be tanking perks because they're so situational when they get hit it typically doesn't include those perks into their damage reduction so this as a damage reduction perk is rubbish for him as it is on the other end of the scale the plus 15 defense while overwatching isn't bad as an overwatching perk it can absolutely go well if you've got sentinel it means that you can go on overwatch and more reliably not be targeted because you'll have that plus 15 to defense but he's not going to be an overwatching soldier he doesn't have any other overwatching perks so i think it's just going to be ranger ranger is boring but at least it's plus one damage on all of his attacks and as an in infantry he gets two attacks per turn so ranger it is and i have just done the maths because i'm that nerdy and mclean has made it to sergeant by two kills as the ranks go for shivs zero is rookie first five kills is specialist another 10 kills after that is lance corporal another 15 kills after that is corporal another 20 kills after that is sergeant which means she has to have a total of 50 kills to reach sergeant and with missions counting as two kills seven times two plus 37 is 51 so mclean has made it to sergeant which means she gets another random perk. Oh, it's so exciting. Can't wait to see what it is. And a fair amount of money. Yep. Good work, everyone. Um, full disclosure now, as I said, I wasn't going to talk about how I did all the modifications that I did in the mission in the background. But one thing I will say is in the trial run, even though I was using less experienced troops, I did actually lose two soldiers at the end there. I had no control over what direction those Chris's would run. And if the zombies came straight for us once they turned, they'd be out of line of sight, but they'd be in range for the Chris that bursts out of them to attack me the following turn. So that's actually why I was being so cautious at the end there with my tanking troops up front, McLean and Hewson. And not to mention, as I said, there could have been active chrysalids on the map that I weren't aware of. Suffice to say, for those of you that didn't read that wall of text, I did implement a method for chrysalids to, let's say, spawn more chrysalids. So, remember, let's head out of here. Will be watching. And where the hell is Bradford? Bradford, what the hell were you doing, man? Sending in a team without informing me? You got them all killed. Except for Illustrious, I suppose. I need to call him up and give him a formal invitation. But Bradford, you are out of control. You're not even looking at me. It's like, no, whatever. Do you want one? I'll send him rookies equipped only with pistols to take on Chrysalis. I don't care. 
And Myers, I had a feeling you'd got promoted. I've got it written down which soldiers have certain ranks, perks that they already have, which means the game won't inform me when they level up. And Myers here did level up to Corporal, but the game didn't tell me because at Corporal, he's got Run and Gun, which is his class perk. So the game just assumed I'd already leveled him up and it doesn't need to inform me. Bad news is that both of his perks are officer perks and he has really, really rubbish will. So, I kind of need to decide if Myers here is going to be an officer. Considering the fact that he's an assault, which means he's always going to be up front, and I don't like that in an officer, and the fact that he's got really low will for a corporal, these two perks are really, really bad for him. What's worse is this double damage reduction from cover doesn't even apply to him unless he's an officer. I think So Others May Live might, but this I checked, and unless he's an officer, he doesn't get the bonus. Which, frankly, I'd be happy to give it to him and be like, okay, you know, you're in full cover now, which means you've got two armor but it is not the case so i think it has to be so others may live if he does become an officer frankly i'd want him to have so others may live anyway but considering the fact that this doesn't work without him being an officer and this might myers i guess you get so others may live and there you go but hey you know plus one aim and plus one will on every mission up to seven even without there being an officer that has that perk it's not bad myers it's not bad why not so we are back and what is mclean's perk gonna be it is gonna be damage control. Now, damage control is much like extra conditioning. On an alloy shiv, or a mech, or a soldier that's got titan armor, it's incredible. On a standard shiv though, that only has 10 health, it's not that good. And here's the problem, exactly like extra conditioning that Angelo's got, that plus two health on extra conditioning won't likely be enough to stop a second shot from killing the shiv especially as we move up to mutons and the heavier mech in the game. Damage control is exactly the same. It only activates and gives another 1.5 damage reduction on top of her existing 1.5 damage reduction after the first shot's hit and it'll only apply for three turns. And considering the first shot will likely take off about five or six damage anyway, damage control very likely won't stop the second shot from killing her. So at a glance, it looked like a really good perk, but the end result is it's not. It's pretty useless and very unlikely for it to actually save her life. But what are you gonna do? It's just how things roll. And there you go, McLean. You are now in fact a sergeant. Well done. You're now at a combined total of 51 kills each mission count of two kills. To get to a tech sergeant, you need another 19 kills, which is quite a ways off. But good luck to you, little shiv. I'm sure you'll get there soon enough. Right, what else are we doing? The air game, yes, I have two rookie pilots and a medium UFO. Hmm. You know, I was actually thinking maybe I should just splash out and get the improved salvage and the alien metology right now. You know what? Screw it. Yeah, I'm gonna do the improved salvage straight away, seeing as I got enough money from the mission rewards anyway. It would take a while for me to get anything back from these investments, but I think it'd be worth it in the long run. Ah, now alien metology, on the other hand, I can't even sell whatever I want to because I don't have enough meld. The foundry is already warmed Shut up, up Shen! Up. Because I may have sold a bunch of meld last episode. It's my bad. And actually, that's very little Illyrium and alloys that you need. I'm surprised. I thought that'd be a lot more than that. So yeah, as soon as we've got enough meld, which frankly is going to be a while, I think we need 40 meld. I'm going to sell whatever I need to, not meld, obviously, or Illyrium or alloys, to get this foundry project. And I have to remember that it was the 24th when we got the Exalt mission. I can't actually remember the day that we got the Exalt mission. Um, I tell you what, if we get to the 30th and we still haven't got a mission, I'll actually exit and watch my video to check the date. Because I think that'll be around the time that I'll need to scan for Exalt. I've been reading a lot of forums, a lot of conflicting reports on Dynamic War. How some people are saying you need to scan every 10 days. Other people are saying if you scan once a month, it's absolutely fine. Long War itself says that it doesn't affect the number of Exalt missions that turn up. Up in Dynamic War, but the mod that adds the reminder in the event list is saying that it does, so I kind of have no idea. If I get really worried about it, I'll probably load up the alternate campaign and just run several months through and see how frequently Exalt turn up. In the meantime, detected. there is this raider. Now we hit it twice, once is enough to bring its chance of success down to 50%. Second time, of course, means that it's going to be lower. And I'm really not keen on using either of these two interceptors in case this flies off and then immediately after we get a satellite hunter. Speaking of which, perhaps I should actually build some satellites. That's kind of a good idea, I think. Too bad I didn't get any chrysalid corpses. It's such a shame. 
sell a bit of Illyrium. I know, I said I wouldn't sell Illyrium, I know. And I think I'm actually going to sell this power source. I'm really far off doing the UFO power source research, so Still screw don't it. Understand Just get rid of it. The aliens would be willing to go to all this trouble. What could they be after? Don't know, it's probably explained in the sequel. Or maybe not. Who knows? Okay, to sell that. Now, I need another 50 to get two satellites. And at this point, I'm really, really starting to run out of things that I can sell. Okay, sell a few Seekers, not Chrysalids. Yeah, go on then, sell a few Mutons. I'm sure we're going to start facing a lot more of them anyway. And fine, just sell the rest as Illyrium. I know I shouldn't sell it, I know. The engineering team is Yeah, the... should be enough. Oh no, I need one more. And two satellites, please. Commander. Our current satellite uplink facility. Shut up, Bradford. I don't trust you anymore. As as you're reckless. You're out of control. Out of okay, so these satellites are more of a backup, not to mention they take so damn long to build. Wow. And I'm gonna build. Oh, I was off. All oh, right, it was 327. I don't know why I thought that. J just one more, just just one more, Illyrian. Just just one more. And then one more satellite. Commander. Shut okay, up, Bradford! Up. Okay, so if we can hold off until these laser cannons are done and then equip them on some of our fighters, you know, whilst they actually get repaired, obviously, and assuming we don't get any satellites shot down out of the sky, then next month I will expand to another it's continent. Really Especially considering the research that's minus 20% for every autopsy and interrogation that I do. I haven't done any autopsies yet, so that'll come in handy. And not to mention, the US has the highest panic rating. Canada's plus two will for engineers and medics is pretty useless at this point in the game at least. And 10% bonus to Sonic training chances is way off in the distance. So if the panic doesn't go up in Mexico, then I'll probably take the US and Canada before the end of next month. And then the following month, I will take Mexico and cover the continent and get that lovely minus 25% to all purchases and maintenance for any and all aircraft and weapons, which I really, really need as they are a massive dent in my budget. Budget talk, people. Exciting stuff. But yeah, let's tick over the clock. Seeing as I'm not exactly going to shoot that bad boy down. Oh, it's gone. And you guys want a laser weapon. Oh, damn it. Speaking of which. Okay, Illustrious is now on his way. I actually went back to the office and sent out that email. And when he turns up, we will greet him in the barracks. So, Illustrious has arrived. He's feeling pretty badass after surviving that mission. That was just a warm-up. Was it just a warm-up? Someone's feeling proud of himself. Well, here he is, and he's got repair. Obviously, his stats aren't going to match what they were in the mission, because when I spawn in a unit via the console commands, it spawns it as an absolutely bare-bones default soldier with no randomization applied to it. Whereas when I bring them in via the higher soldier, which is technically what I do, obviously, because I can't spawn them in the base, which is annoying. But I brought him in via the higher soldier, which means his stats become randomized, and apparently he has maximum aim. Max aim. How do you have max aim? You missed so many pistol shots. You could have so easily got that medal for missing 10 shots in a row. But speaking of medals, you get the kind of semi-unique medal through Fire and Flames, a variation of the Terror Mission medal for a soldier that we recruit on a mission. But yeah, other than that, you've got repair and 72 aim. I think I'm going to turn you into an infantry. 72 aim is brilliant and it'd be outstanding on a sniper, but that also mean repair is pointless. Whereas if you're an infantry, then you can quite easily carry with you an arc thrower. And seeing as you're going to be at the front lines, you won't be that far out of range of the targets you're trying to capture. So I think I will turn you into an infantry. And there you go, Illustrious, you are now an infantry. Obviously, again, this is me doing more hacking. It's saying here that Illustrious hasn't got enough XP to level up to Specialist, but considering that he just went on that mission and he got at least one kill, I'm pretty sure, regardless of whether he got a kill or not, being on that mission alone was enough to give him XP. So the next mission he goes on, I will give him all the XP that he earned on the previous mission and any kills, if he did get any kills, I will give him the kills as well. So at least the kills counter will be correct, even if the missions counter won't. And I'll also remove his life up perk and then turning him to an infantry when he gets back to base. Otherwise the game will kind of bug out because he's got a class perk and the same thing will happen to him as it happened to Frank here. Yeah, let's let's ignore that question mark perk. It's fine, it's fine. I'll just keep an eye on your abilities and when you level up, it absolutely fine, don't worry about it. Okay, let's keep ticking over the clock and see what's next. Shift suppression maybe? Shift suppression is done. So finally, McLean can make use of Danger Zone. Obviously, I didn't buy it just for McLean. I mean, I wouldn't have preferences like that. <laughs> mm. We're picking up a new contact. You son a of a bitch. Almost like it's scanning for you something. You son of a bitch. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, you son of a bitch. 
Oh, you would, wouldn't you? Okay, so I have got Beagle back in four days with Stingray missiles. Would have been handy now, but hey. The Baron's back in a week, as is Furball, although he's not exactly in the right continent. For now, we have three rookies. But it had to happen so close before the council report. Damn it. At least the panic here across Africa is really low, so if a satellite does get shot down, it's not a big deal. But still, I can't... Oh, I can't afford to just waste money Contact like that. Detected. All right, let's go. With oh, and we haven't actually fought a fighter before. Okay, well, let's see what we can do. We'll go defensive and hopefully one of these guys can get a shot in without getting hit in return and then just fly back to base and then fly out there again, hopefully. Come on then, you bastard. Damn it. Okay, well, at least we got one hit in. Two hits in. Not bad considering. Really not bad. Very good work, Radar. You hit a fighter twice and you only got hit once in return, which means you shouldn't be out for more than a week. That is a really, really good effort. If the rest of you can do the exact same thing, brilliant. We won't be able to shoot it down, but we'll likely do enough damage to it that it will fail its mission. So Big Red, you're up next. Can you hit it without it hitting you in return? Is padlocked. Yes! No joy here. Good! Okay, Big Red. Turn around and do that again. We have eyes Ooh, on the I bed. thought the game crashed. <laughs> I really thought the game crashed. Oh no! The game's learning! The game is definitely learning. Contact lost. You didn't even hit it once in that encounter. Although, you only got hit once in return, which isn't bad. <sighs> okay, so they're both out for 11 days. It's not exactly a week, but it's still, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. <sighs> Stinger, should I go defensive and try to pull the same trick, or should I go aggressive and go all in, trying to deal as much damage to you as possible? We've got three hits in, which isn't enough to start making it smoke. Remember, as soon as it starts smoking, it's guaranteed to fail its mission. Yeah, I'm gonna go aggressive. Let's do this. We've got three hits in. Probably need at least another three to make it smoke. Oh no, it's already smoking. What the hell am I talking about? Why are you already smoking? Okay, already got hit. And you hit it again, I think. No, fall out! Fall out. No. Okay, Whew. Okay. you got one more hit in there at the end, and thankfully I pressed the button before he fired that last shot that would have killed you. He was so close to shooting that fighter down. So, so close. Damn it. I mean, at least he is well and truly smoking. There is no way he's going to be able to finish the mission. He will fail at finding any of my satellites. He'll fly back to base, limping with his alien scaly tail between his legs, and I suppose I did get what I wanted. So Stinger, 43 days in the repair bay. You did your job, buddy. I mean, to be frank, Big Red and Raider did the job. They were the ones that made him smoke, but you hit him like, what, three times? Maybe four? So piss off. Go back home. Go tell your ethereal slash elder leaders that you suck and you failed at your mission. Okay, whew, he didn't actually shoot down a satellite. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. Incoming transmission. All right then, Councilman, tell me how brilliant I am and that you need me to fund your endeavors. We are extremely impressed with our expectations. Your recent results were our expectations. And that is a statement this council makes. So, only two UFOs escaped, and that was right at the end there. That raider and that fighter. That was a bit of a bugger. And I wasn't actually checking to see if the raider succeeded in his mission, but looking at the panic across Africa, seeing as that's where the raider was flying over, it looks like the raider failed in his bombing run. It looks like he did turn around when he got injured. So, good news there as well. Right, so I got an A. Practically as good a report card as I can ever get. What are you going to give me? Two scientists, an engineer, awesome. And how much money? We will be in touch. Oh, you took money from me. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, that um, A standard report card is clearly worth you just taking money away from me instead of giving it to me. That's fine. It's fine, Castle. Don't worry. When the aliens take over and they incorporate their friendly advent initiative, we'll know who to blame. The voice of honest trailers. Let's move on. Oh, right. Damn it. I need to check the results. Pretty sure it happened around the 20th, because it had only been two days since everybody had been on that last mission before heading to Newfoundland. Which means I think I'll scan it on the 6th of July, around the time the laser shotguns are done. That's around the time that I'll scan. And that's what I'm sticking with. I have no idea if it'll work. Probably won't, damn it. <laughs> I'm probably going to get hacked, or more likely panic. Okay, well, actually, hold on. Larry, you're back. My god, man, you are back. The only person that has CCS on two missions that we need a CCS most. Well, at least you're back. Hey, you're back. You're not dead. You survived that point blank floater shot to the face. And everybody else that's exhausted is taking the rest of the week off. Except for Powell, it would appear, who is happy to just have one more day and then get back on the job. Good work, buddy. 
But what I came here for was my operative, Christopher Walken. You're good to go, so good to keep in mind. Right, and the names that you guys have suggested for Shade Zombie, including Zombody and Chrissy, seeing as the zombie is a chrysalis for a chrysalid, and Walken's Muton Mutton, I think someone suggested. Guys, let me know in the chat what you think, and if you have any other suggestions, I'll probably leave them as they are until these two guys go on a mission. For now, it'll do. Let's keep ticking over. Oh yes, laser cannons, and give me that rebate. Okay, we have three laser cannons. Okay, now Beagle here, quite skilled as a pilot. I'm gonna leave him with the Stingray missiles. He does need to be quite skilled for the Stingray missiles to hit. On the other hand, I do kind of need pilots back and ready for combat. So when Furball here comes back from Europe in two days, he'll need four more days of repair. So in six days, I'll have Beagle, Baron, and Furball, which means I guess it's the rest of you are the ones that get the laser cannons. So that's another seven days, that's 14 days. So these guys are gonna be ready beforehand. In that case, I'm gonna have, give you one laser cannon and the other laser cannon can go to you. That way we spread out how long fighters are gonna be out of service for. If I gave all the laser cannons to the three least injured interceptors, all of a sudden it would be that I'd have no reinforcement interceptors for like nearly two weeks. So at least this way it'll be more staggered. Right now I've got one pilot in four days, I'll have two, six days, I'll have three, seven days, I'll have four. And I think with arming this weapon, Big Red will be back in like 12 days or something. But that'll do for now. Hopefully our air game can begin to catch up. Yes, laser strike rifle. Sectoids for a scientist for Australia. Yeah, sure, go for it. Knock yourself out with those little gray and I'm glad because Australia needs all the help they can get. Every request that I fill increases their shield slightly, which increases their resistance to panic. And Australia really needs that. Give me my laser battle rifle. Thank you very much. And two more days and I'll have my entire squad kitted out with laser weapons. Except for the shiv, I guess. Aircraft transfer complete. Okay, so everyone's where they need to be. Good, good. And when the laser weapons are done, I will scan for exalt. Somehow, somehow I'll find the money somewhere. Shotgun, sniper rifles, shotgun. You know what, screw it, I'm gonna hold off until Alien Savage is done. God, I'm being so reckless, I really shouldn't. I don't care, do it! Illyrium for China, for two scientists. You know what, yeah, two scientists for 15 Illyrium, yeah, okay, that's, that's not bad. And like pretty much every other country, their panic shield is very low, even though they're not that panicked at the minute. You know, I'm thinking, maybe I should wait until the scan for exalt timer kicks in. It's not that far away now. Now is around the time that I was thinking of scanning. And this is saying wait five days. Maybe I should. Oh, screw it. Why not? I, yeah, I'll do that. I will wait. Contact I'll trust the mod. Okay. Radar low. Probably on another bombing run. Oh, Beagle. Ooh, uh, are you feeling up for it? Oh, man. Um... With one pilot, I'm not really keen on doing the trick of flying up and hoping to hit because it could turn out that in the entire battle before the time limit runs out, I only get one shot in, which won't be enough to send him scampering away. Well, it will give him like a 50% chance to fail. But I think I'm gonna go balanced and at least Stingray missiles are a little bit more effective on raiders. They have a little bit of armor, so I will be getting that extra damage for Stingray missiles. I still don't know if it compares to avalanche missiles when it's against raiders, but at least they're not wasted. Beagle, I have faith. Do what you can. Go balanced and smoke him. Damn it. Good. Good. That last shot could have killed him, but you did hit him twice, which is well, I can ask for really. Now, I said this at the beginning of the campaign when I was doing the second wave options, but in case some of you forgot. Guys, this, what you're seeing right now, this is with friendly skies turned on, which means all of my interceptors have a plus 15 chance to hit their targets. This is with plus 15 aim on all of my fighter pilots. Fun, right? I really wish they tried to make a better air game in XCOM 2 instead of just scrapping the whole thing. Because hey, who needs fighters when your ship can fly and subsequently get shot down? So Beagle hit you twice, which is pretty much where we were last time with the radar. And seeing as we won't have any more interceptors for three hours. Interesting. Raider, do you want to stick around for three hours? Are you willing to stick around for three hours? One more hour. Okay, I'm pretty sure the raid is leaving now, which means they've either succeeded or failed in their mission. I don't think it applies until they actually disappear off the map. So we will send Baron aggressive as if he's, you know, shooing the raider off. 
Oh yeah, he's gone. And yep, he's gone. Contact lost. So let's see if he did succeed in his mission. It doesn't look like it. Or does it? That looks different. I'm pretty sure two of the countries were green and one of them was blue. Maybe he did succeed, he just didn't do very well. Oh, either way, even if he did succeed, it wasn't a lot of panic. Improve savage, please. We're detecting a new oh, for the love of much larger God. Than anything we've previously encountered. I recommend we scramble our best equipped fighters if we're going to engage that ship. Bradford, it isn't much larger than we've... Oh... It is much larger than... Oh... Oh, panic is setting in! Panic's setting in! Oh, no! No, 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 no! No, don't do this to me! Internal systems are... Oh, this has been too long an episode. Do not do this to me. Security status red. Repeat. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let, let's look at it this way. Okay, don't panic yet. Okay. Now, it's not a troop transport, or it would say that it was a troop transport, because we've already taken out a troop transport. That was on mission three or four, Epic Hour. That was a troop transport, which means if this was a troop transport, we'd know it. Also, it's not a battleship, otherwise it would say very large, which means it's not a troop transport or a battleship, which means it's most likely an abductor. That means it's probably not a base defense. Baron... I really don't want to rest that. I'm thinking maybe I can just shoot it once and get away. But then again, it's Nap of the Earth, which means it's going to land. And when it's on its way to land, you can't make it fail its mission. The only way to make it fail its mission is after it's landed to then disrupt what it's doing. Whether it's an abduction, a terror site, or just landing and doing research. So forcing a UFO to fail its mission only applies when it's at low or high altitude. Nap of the Earth, you can't make it fail unless you shoot it down entirely. Oh, do not be a base defense. Do not be a base defense. Not yet, game. Not yet. Don't give me two new mission types in a row and then throw a base defense at me. Oh my god, thank god. It was heading for the base. It was heading for the base. It landed before it reached. Oh my god. Oh. Commander, we're tracking several reported abductions via the hologlobe. I think I'm gonna go now. This has been a very long episode, ladies and gentlemen. Next time, we're going to have a moderately difficult reduction that will give us 180 bucks and it will be on the waterfront, which means either the horrible warehouse map or the much more fun water treatment pier map. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go have a lie down now. If you enjoyed the mission, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and maybe even share it with others that are interested in XCOM and are willing to watch a series that does things a little bit differently because my god are things a little bit different here. Guys, thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye. Bye-bye now. I'm gonna go lie down. Bye-bye. 6860, deal the damage. A solid hit dealing six damage. So Redford's gotta finish the job. 78% for one damage. Come on, Redford. Bang bang, pop bang. Oh, by a human, no. So I'll just have him move round. And take one of the first, incredibly inaccurate, Seeker pot shots. 34%, come on Morris, feel it. Miss, 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 miss. Yeah, that's to be expected. Okay. Showtime, and my mobility is so slow. Thankfully, as I said, it doesn't affect rolls. I'm going to do my best to take out the turret. I don't know if I will. But, now we're facing a boss. My frost fang and the hag's Gauntlets should really come into their own here. As you saw, I almost had her frozen because I had her slowed down so much. And the grave.